on this episode of Tell Us a Story. And you became an international hostage and were held in Venezuela until October of 2022. Coach is a survivor because I'm a survivor. I don't like sharks. I'm very afraid of sharks. Although the chances, am I right? We went through a lot of things that I was not expecting to survive. By the way, the way I wrote my book was writing letters with my wife. And I became a... Uh, a part of a, a member of something that is called the Sid Go Six. The, the story of your journey is fascinating. Now, your book is called From Hero to Villain. That is also a fascinating story. And I created my coaching program that is called LPSG, Life Pills for a Survivor Guide. What I do where I combine my leadership experience with my, with my survivor experience. Do you like pasta or risotto? Welcome to Tell Us a Story, the podcast by Belmont City Press, where entrepreneurs and sales professionals share their journeys, insights, and strategies for success. In each episode, our guests reveal how they've overcome challenges, established their brands, and leveraged their stories to promote their businesses so you can too. I'm Red Hilton your host for this episode. Today I'm joined by Jose Pereira, who is the owner of Coach as a Survivor. So, Jose, tell us a story. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Well, my story is that I, I come from a corporate background in the oil and gas, did more than three decades uh, in the oil and gas. But I went through an event that marked my life. Uh, I, I became a, I'm from in 2017, an international hostage after a business trip going to Venezuela. And I became a, 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 a part of a, a member of something that is called the CITGO6. The people Google CITGO6, C-I-T-G-O, because what's the name of the mm -hmm. company, Cisco Petroleum. You will find a lot of the stories of, 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 of our case. I, I'm one of the Cisco Six. Yeah. So, so when I came back in October 2022, I decided to pivot my career. And it was not in the day one. I began to explore what I wanted to do. And I decided to convert myself in a leadership and resilient coach and created Coach as a Survivor. Coach as a Survivor because I'm a survivor. Amen. <laughs> and, Amen. And so I decided to put that name Coach as a Survivor and I created my coaching program that is called LPSG, Life Pills for a Survivor Guide. What I do, where I combine my leadership experience with my, with my survivor experience, because I'm a leadership and resilience coach today, and I, I work one-on-one -on -one sessions with entrepreneurs, CEOs, on tapping unleashing their unbreakable spirit of leadership. People that, that have some, their stocks in, in belief, they are hostage in their situation. I help them overcome this situation and this today my coaching program. I also am doing public speaking and recently I became an author because I, I published my book. So that, that's what today I do. And I also have a, 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 a fourth thing that I do a strong advocacy for the hostage community that today I belong. Mm. This is something that I always say, this is a family I never asked to be, but it became my family. People that have gone through this situation in other parts of the world, today we are connected. I work with foundations that, that help Americans that have been captive or still are being captive in other countries. I'm part of that community and I support those foundations too. So that's what I'm today doing. Jose, your story is fascinating. And the only thing that is bigger than that and is your attitude. Like you have lived a lifetime and then some as well. So just to recap, because it's it's so fascinating to me. And knowing that, you know, I saw your story play out in real time, you know, as part of history that you know, kids will learn as well. So, you know, just before Thanksgiving in 2017, you were part of the um, oil and gas community and you were invited, you know, to Venezuela for a, a meeting of some sort. And, a meeting. Yeah, a meeting. And you became an international hostage and were held in Venezuela until October of 2022. 
Yes. And you went through a million lifetimes while you were there. And, you know, when you and I have spoken before and I said to you, Jose, did you think you were going to survive? And your answer was no. And in it, you did, you know, and your spirit now and I'm amazed by you and your book and your story and everything and your public speaking and you're going to be keynoting and you're teaching, but you are working one on one with people and you are literally saying, hey, you know, this is my story. I'm going to help you build your story. And it is amazing. Can I just say that? And as I said to you the last time we spoke, I am glad you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you because uh, for me, this is today, to tell you the truth is kind of a mission. Because I discovered, I'm a man of God today, that by the way, I forgot to say that I also do church service. I'm very connected to my church today. Okay. And I discovered that, that uh, you go through this situation in life because this is part of the master plan of God. So for some reason, God put me in that path. And for some reason, I discovered that I have that uh, now the mission to share it with others and to help others. Because you never know when you're going to touch a soul, my friend. You never know. I, you never know. And honestly, it, your story is just fascinating and amazing. And I think everyone, your book um, is From Hero to Villain, which you and I have talked about exactly what that means. And we'll cover that in a minute. But I think everyone sort of needs to read it and discover exactly what you went through and who you are now, because you're just your spirit is just so contagious. Absolutely so contagious. Can you do me a favor? Kind of talk about your one on one programs and who are they for? And how do people sort of benefit from your one-on-one -on -one coaching and your any of your coaching, actually? Yeah, basically, I'm, I'm working, is, as I said, with CEOs of companies, business owners, and entrepreneurs. What I do, I I, dis I discovered that through, through my ordeal, we went through several steps that we followed to, to, to survive, to, to, to make it. So, for example, things like discovering how we work with uh, uh, developing resilience, how we develop to stay determined, how we need to be adaptive, how we discovered uh, our leadership skills, because I was a leader in, in, in my past, but, but I never thought that, that having gone through that situation, I had to put it in practice mm -hmm. to survive. Things like uh, 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 creating community, creating empathy, communicating, being adapting of the situation you were going, all these things that we, I went through today, I teach it. So that's a way I help others because sometimes people have problem communicating with their, with their peers, with, with their employee. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, they have some, they are stuck in their situation and, and their company doesn't grow because they're having issues. And, and, and I always say that everybody has inside that inner force. Everybody has that. It's the power within. Mm -hmm. And what you have to do is unleash it. And that's what I do, helping people. That's my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. And that's what you do for people. So your ideal client would be, you said, you know, corporate CEOs. Sort of clearly define that for me. Who is it that you are speaking to? Yeah, corporate CEOs, business owners, and entrepreneurs. That is my avatar. And is and that and you were you were you a CEO before you were captured, but, and so you have that basis as well. I was, CEO, I was a CEO. I was the CEO, but I did a lot of management position in the oil and gas. So I have walked the walk and talked the talk. So sure. I I have been there, so I, I know how I can help them because I have been one of them. Sure. So you can speak their language, but you also you have such a great perspective. I mean, learning to survive and putting your leadership skills to the test in order to live, in order to survive, backing that out, you probably can teach anyone anything and give them some perspective. Of course. I, I'm not saying that because this is my avatar. I cannot talk with any audience. This is something that is universal. Sure. That Surviving is something universal because you can go to any situation in life and sometimes you believe that you're not going to make it. Believe me, you always will make it. Mm. You always will make it. I went through the darkest moment that can, anybody can imagine in my life. If, if the people read my book, they will discover all the things we went through. Mm -hmm. We went through a lot of things that 
I was not expecting to survive. By the way, the way I wrote my book was writing letters with my wife. I don't know if I committed that to you. So yeah. my book, based on the letters I wrote during more than three years, hiding letters that I smuggled uh, with my wife. My wife was here in the U.S. Yeah. I was in Venezuela. And we could, could could connect ourselves through these letters that we did like every two, three days. And I, and I wrote like 1,000 letters between she and me, and, and that I converted in my book. So my book has that because I really didn't know if we, I was going to survive. If, if, if you go to my book, you will see a lot of things I went through there. I, I don't know. I have bronchitis. I suffered pneumonia, two times COVID. I had a heart attack. I fainted. Uh, I, I had scabies. I want to think that inimaginable. So a normal person would say, oh, I'm not going to make it. I was thinking I was not going to make it. But a I'm here. normal person with one, maybe two of those things would say, I'm not going to make it. I mean, you had COVID, you had a heart attack, you were, you know, not, you know, kept in very good conditions medically, you know, nutritionally. Do you want to share with us? You what? <laughs> I lost 100 pounds. Yes. I mean, yeah. Darby. Um, do you want to share with us the story about your son? Oh, well, that, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning because I was starving. As I said, the first year I was literally starving. So the situation began to get very, very tense with the relation between the two countries. By the way, they had recalled the U.S. ambassador. So the, the U.S. decided to talk with the U.N., and the UN flew to Venezuela, a commission of the, U the UN, and they uh, uh, begin to pressure and they allow us to bring food, our family. Mm -hmm. So uh, they said, okay, your family had to bring your food. My wife tried to do it from here to the US, but it was a very complicated logistics. So what, what my eldest son did, he was working in, in Aruba mm -hmm. by that time. He flew to Colombia, he moved to Colombia, and he stayed four years sending me food every week. Literally, my son made me survive because mm -hmm. he really dedicated every week to send a, a complete, uh, you know, grocery to Venezuela. Somebody in Venezuela pick up the food and cook it and then send it to me. It was a very complicated logistic. Sure. But he's doing it during four years. Can you imagine years. that? And you said he left his wife and kids and from in Aruba and moved to Colombia with his family. He yep. moved with his family. He put his kids in, in a college in, in, in Colombia, in Bogota. He did a part time job. Yeah. And, but really, he, he was like I don't know, 60 percent of his time dedicated to me. Sure. Literally. And what did you say was in the bottom of the food baskets? Well, that, that, that is exactly what I did with the letter, because when, when he began to provide me the food that I was now allowing to have food, I was allowing to have food three times in the week, every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every Saturday. So when they brought me the food, and I had to return the trash cans, because in Venezuela there was not cans, so I had to return the trash cans so they can wash it. Mm. So, so when I was returning the trash cans, I begin to put in a double bottom of the cans the letters. That that's how I could smuggle them. They never dis discovered that. And my wife, when she, uh, 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 my son brought me the the food back, was the, my wife wife letters. So I was sending her letters, and she was replying to me. And we did a great communication because this is something that I, I also today tell the people: if you're going to any situation in your life, you need to get. The people that love you that that's what happened i i could come back because i had the support of my family mm -hmm. so that was for me the cornerstone of surviving having the support of my family and no one sort of gets to where they are by themselves and i think that's sort of a, a great representation of it without your family you probably would not have survived of course not of course not and, and you know th th this is very typical the people are going through adversity and they do it alone i right? say so the people never do things alone yeah. you don't have to navigate your adversities alone it's, look your circle of support sometimes people say i don't have nobody go to your church do, do, do always you will find somebody that will support you because yeah. we we are human you know one of the mm -hmm. things that, that always happened that at the end we are humans 
we are human beings. So we connect is that way. That's the way that people really connect. When you're going to any situation in life, you will always will find support. Always. That's amazing. So you smuggled the letters to your wife in the bottom of a trash can. Yes. From yes. Venezuela through Colombia with your son back to the U.S. Amazing. It was a complicated logistic, but it worked. It worked, and I stayed with it during three years. It worked during three years. That's amazing. It's amazing. Talk to me about when you are coaching with people, when you're talking with people, when they're reading your book, what are the benefits they get from your story? What is it that, that they then walk away with, you know, as far as after you tell their story? Because I get chills every time you and I speak. I tell the people that when, when the people close this book, I want them to have the sense that they can survive anything in their life. Mm -hmm. That any adversity that you're going in your life, anything, you can name it, anything that you're going in your life, you will always survive it. But you have to have that disposition, the mindset, the, the, the focus on the situation, and, 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 and find the purpose, because sometimes your adversity is part of the purpose. As I said, I discovered that my case, there was a master plan. Always there is a purpose while you're going through things in life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't see it. And maybe, maybe, it, it, because that, that is the way God op operates, that you have to go from point A to point B, but you have to go through a lot of things in your life. Those adversities that you're going maybe are part of those points that you have to, to, to connect, to go from A to B. And when you see the picture of your life, sometimes you will say, okay, now I understand why I went through this. That's my case. That's it explains my case. to you the story it of your journey. Story. It explains your story. And believe me, always is like that. Yeah. Always. The, always. The, the, the story of your journey is fascinating. Now, your book is called From Hero to Villain. That is also a fascinating story. Can you share with us where that came from? Well, I decided to put that name because, as I said, uh, I, that was November uh, 2017 that I, I was called to this business trip. I was a CEO of the company. I was in a movie with theater with my wife. I was in the world premiere of Superman. Okay? I, I was... I'm a big fan of Superman. So I was in my Superman uh, premiere. I received a phone call and, and, and I had to go the next day to Caracas to a presentation. And I didn't see nothing wrong, but I was getting retired. This is the other thing. I was planning to get retired. but that time, I already had my plan to get retired. And I was in my retire mode. So I flew to Caracas to my last meeting uh, before getting retired, that never happened because it was an ambush. So I am in that presentation in a, a, a big room with around 1,000 people. Wow. And I received a standing ovation because we were revamping the refinery in Aruba, my, where my son was working. I, I didn't say that I, I we are a fourth generation of oil and gas working in my family. So my, my son is the fourth generation. I'm the third. So he was working in the Aruba refinery. I, I, I had that project uh, going there. So I do the presentation and I receive that standing ovation. And I say, wow, say what a way to finish your career. You know, the people like this. Few minutes after they come, this guard that you can see here, very scary, like 20 guys. That, that is the counterintelligent police of that country. And I was accused to be American spy. So I became from a big hero to the worst of the villain in a in a minute. In the so eyes that, of the Venezuelan people, essentially. Yeah. That's where the villain. So you were a hero yeah. to them because you had succeeded and done well in your fourth, you know, third generation. I, and then you were a, a villain because they accused you of being a spy on them. If you go to Google, you will see that they the the the, the dictator of Venezuela announcing in national TV. They have caught six American spies, and, and, and we were accused to be the worst of the villains. So that's why I decided to call my book From Hero to Villain, because that's something bizarre, but it's yeah. what happened. And, and I think having that perspective and understanding, 
because I was like, you're a hero to us. Why are you a villain? And now we understand. Did you, did you ever figure out what the ulterior motive or the agenda was in capturing you? Were they trying to leverage the U.S. in some way? Yes, what, yes. What, how were you the pawn? What were you the pawn of? Well, we became the pawn, and th that was something that really was inadvertent because I didn't never see that coming because that was during the Trump administration, and the Trump was imposing imposing sanctions to Venezuela because that is a communist regime. By the way, today Venezuela one week ago had elections. There is a massive fraud going on, so the, the story is re like repeating six, seven years after. So. Trump was imposing, had imposed already sanctions and, and an oil embargo. And these guys was trying to leverage us, getting us released, getting relief in the sanction, getting lifted the oil embargo, or getting one of the big drug lords that is one of their comrades, they get released that was here in a U.S. prison. So it was a big leverage these guys were asking for us. It's amazing. Now, you said that your son is fourth generation in the oil and gas mm. industry. Is he still in that industry now? Yes, he, yes, uh, yes. He came, I came back in October 2022. He came back in January. And now he's working in an oil and gas company here in Houston. Yeah. So you're, he's, but he's in the States? Yeah, he's here in the States and he's recovered back his, his, uh, his life. You know? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, you have a speech that you give. I know you do keynoting and speaking and you're available for that. You have a website. I just want to make sure we um, mention that as well. It's joseconnect.com. We're going to put some links in the show notes. So if someone is looking for an inspirational speaker, someone who just has, you know, some a story to tell and, you know, can motivate people to feel as though they can accomplish and, and achieve anything. You're available for that, but it's joseconnect.com. Talk to me about your speech, Captivity to Freedom. Well, I, I talk in, in my speech from Captivity to Freedom how you can go through situation in life, but you can survive it with the help of the hope, the faith, and the love. Because for us, when 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 my family began to feed me and, and I saw the first time my, my wife, that gave me hope. But the hope leads you to the faith because now you you know that you you have they were supporting you and you begin to get connected to your to your spirituality to God. So now you have faith. So the hope leads you to faith, the faith leads you to strength, and, and that support of the love will make you make things in life. Because now you you can you can uh really understand that you're going through that situation for some reason. And, and in my case, I decided to stay strong in body, soul, and spirit for my wife, for my family, for my kids. Mm -hmm. And this is what I, 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 I talk in my speech. I want to inspire the, the people that anything that they're going in their life, they can always make it. If you go to my webpage, you will see a lot of videos that I have there they had done virtually in, on a stage speech. By the way, I did one uh, this weekend uh, in the Unity Church here in Houston, one of the biggest churches in Houston. I, I, I did one there, wonderful audience. And I'm going to do one in, in, in September 12th, very soon when this yep. is going to be uh, in the Permian Basin uh, Young Professional Symposium. It's, it's, a, it's a keynote in the oil and gas. So it's going to be great because it's part of my community. Yeah. So I decided to be there uh, talking with them because our young guys, young professionals. So that is something uh, incredible because today the Gen Z needs people to inspire them because, you know, all this social media, all, all what's going in the world, sometimes people think that they're, they're going through troubles and they're going to have, you know, they're not going to make it. A lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. And I say, hey, man, hey, I don't get it. You, you can make things. I'm the proof of it. Yeah. So I, I'm really, really excited to talk with these guys because these are professional guys like maybe can be my son, you know? Yeah. I was just going to say that. So it's a your keynote speech for young professionals in the oil and gas industry. You are literally 
speaking to you from 40 years ago. Yes, yes, that's, yes. I mean, that's I sort of love, full circle. I love, I love it. Because when I had that age, you know, I did my first uh, uh, supervising position when I when I was 30 years. Mm. Because I began to work very early. I began to work when I was 21. So when I was 30 years, I I, I, I was named superintendent in Venezuela. In the oil and gas, it, it was like a manager with thirty years. So, so I did a great career, and and I can say it was a successful career. But it's because I had the mindset. Yeah, I had the mindset. So this is something that today I want to talk to the to the people. You need to have the mindset. You need to really believe in yourself, because sometimes you 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 do self sabotage. You you are your own sabotage so that that is something that's happening today with gen z people so i'm excited to talk with them yes i think people do get in their own ways they don't believe they can achieve and i think if you can give someone perspective i i don't know how they walk away from any any time with you not being inspired i think you make me a better person in Thanks. our conversations i i feel more patient after speaking with you i you know try to gain more perspective after speaking with you i feel at peace after speaking with you you provide that and i literally i i would like to be half the person you are honestly it it's your you are infectious to just spend time with because you have such clarity after something that could have really brought you to a dark place. And I'm not, I know you've been in dark places, but the fact that you were able to climb out of that and be who you are, and some people attach to faith and some people attach to other things. And, you know, you have a, a, a deep knowledge and faith in, you know, God and, and what you believe. And that is something that you bring to other people without judgment and how they're, you know, how you receive them and where you meet them. And you are truly infectious. You know something? Today, today, I really believe that uh, uh, I, I'm not going to say that I'm happy that this happened to me, but I cannot be happy. But I'm really happy that the that, that lesson that, that I learned after that. Today, for example, I, as I said, I'm very connected to my church, by the way. I, I came today with a, a morning prayer at 4 a.m. in the morning. So I, 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 I'm I literally awake. In, in, so I went 4 a.m. in the morning. We went to a group to pray to my church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being there, kneel to God and, and, and giving thanks for all what he done to us. Because, man, I can tell you, being here for me today is a miracle. Yeah. What's going on right now in this moment in Venezuela? The riots, the, the all these things. By the way, one of my 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 great friends that I mentioned him in the in the book, mm -hmm. he's here because he became a very good friend. Uh, he's a journalist. He he was with me in uh, during years, and then he was uh, released like three months ago. He was recaptured three days ago, so oh, he's no. now yeah yeah. So I'm thinking him, you know. So, and I'm here. I'm, I'm here, and some people are still there in jail. The so political. He was released. He's a journalist, and he went back into journalism, yeah. and he, he went back there. No, he. But the problem that his name is Roland Carreño. Roland is a journalist, but also is an activist, okay. a, a civil right activist. So he began to, you know, promote all this stuff. They grab him back to jail. He's now three days ago. He's back back to jail. Mm -hmm. And, and and by the way, he was one of my inspiration for my book because he, he literally when we had the when I had a heart attack, I was allowed to begin to have morning walks, you know, mm -hmm. hard. And I was walking with him, and every morning I was walking, having this walk with him, talking up. And I said, hey, you know, I want to write my book. But that moment, I already had put the name. I already said my book is gonna be called From Hero to Villain, and he began to give me based on his experience, advices. So many of the things I, that I put here are because he helped me. He mm -hmm. was an inspiration for me. And now that guy is back to jail. In this moment, when we're yeah. talking. Yeah. 
So mm -hmm. I'm that I'm here. So I have to be grateful, mm -hmm. express gratitude to, to God because I'm here. Mm. Well, you know, I often ask, you know, people on my show, what is their Monty? And Monty is our mascot at Belmont City Press. And, you know, our Monty is sort of uh, an example or a beacon of something inspirational or, or a phrase or something that people carry with them that gets them through a tough time. So I ask you, Jose, what is your Monty? Well, my Monty is my motto. Never give up, never lose faith, never lose hope. That, that, that's my motto. Never give up, never lose hope, never lose faith? Yes. And yes. When, did you, when did that come together for you? Did you have that before you were held hostage or did it develop over time? I'm going to show you this. Yeah. We, 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 we created the Seagull Six Coalition, our family, when oh, I was wow. in uh, and, and, and this, this is, it was the motto, never give up. Never give up. Never Sick give up. Six. Yes. I, 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 I always carry it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and your resiliency is amazing. Amazing. And I, again, I'll say it again. You're infectious. You're just infectious. You're joyous, I guess, is the best way to put it. You know. Thank you. Um, all right, so you have a few minutes for our rapid fire. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. You kind of, you know, I'll give you two options. Tell me which one speaks to you the most. We can kind of get to know, you know, Jose, you know, and, and your likes and dislikes. Are you ready? Go ahead. All right. Do you prefer on a plane a window seat or an aisle seat? No, I'm an aisle seat. <laughs> you really? Okay. All right. You want to be able to get up and walk around? Yes, yes. Because if you have to go to the restaurant, you don't have to be, you know, you go and go. Yeah. So I'm a <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> um, do you prefer, oh, I'm going to ask you, spicy food or mild food? No, I'm not a spicy guy. I'm, I'm not as I'm not either. That's the only right answer, Jose. That's the only right answer. I'm sorry. Um, do you like pasta or risotto? Well, risotto is I love risotto. Yeah. Good I'm risotto is good. Is good. Yeah. 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 I, I I I hear you. Would you rather be swimming in the ocean or a river? Oh well, good question. I love both. But river is great. Yeah. I, I love yeah. I so I don't like sharks. I'm very afraid of sharks, although the chances, am I right? Um, but I like the waves. So if you're in a river, it's a little more tame. I, I don't know. I might go ocean, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, do you like card games or board games? No, I'm more board games. Board games? Okay. All right. And are you, and I know the answer to this, are you an early bird or a night owl? I'm an early bird. Yeah. If you're getting up at 4 a.m. to pray, and honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, Jose, I could probably give you a list of people who say, if you're going to be hanging out with me, you need to get up at 4 a.m. and pray just to get through it with me. But so I appreciate that. But I love the morning. I love the morning. Absolutely. I have been morning all my life because, again, in my career in oil and gas, we have a, a morning meeting at say, 6 a.m. in the morning. So. Oh. Yeah, and was that bef before people would go out into the field? Yeah, because we had a, a, it was like a daily recap of, of the operations. So, sure. so it was a, it, it was a morning uh, recap with the uh, main operation people, boo, 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 50, 20 minutes and everybody gone, but 6 a.m. in the morning, inside, wow. inside. Let me ask you this. What are you doing for your retirement now? Other than the speaking... And, you know, it, talking with people and your coaching and stuff like that, you've retired. What, where are you finding joy in your retirement? Well, you know, do, doing the advocacy that I'm doing for the Hatchet community really fills my heart and, and the church service. These are the two things that really uh, infuse uh, my soul because uh, I'm, as I said, I'm very connected to my church today. So I do several church services. Uh, I'm today in a senior citizen group called the Golden Heart. Mm -hmm. I'm part of it, so we're very connected with them. I'm doing a leadership uh, training for for uh, some church uh, services that we're having there. And in the community of a hostess, uh, as I said, I'm connected with several foundations. 
There's a foundation called the James Foley Legacy Foundation. I have been writing article, blog with them. Uh, Hosted US uh, also. I have been writing. I did a podcast with them. It's going to air very soon. Um, uh, there's another one that ho hosted a worldwide. I did a summit with them. The, I was invited during the UN and mm -hmm. a general assembly in September in New York. Uh, the Baker Lamassi Foundation. There, there, there are several things that, that I'm doing today. Uh, sorry, Baker Lamassi, no, Amir Fakuri. Baker Lamassi is a former host, so mm -hmm. I got confused. And the Amir Fakuri Foundation. So I'm connected with several foundations that work to help so support families former hosted or unfortunately people that are still, still. under that. So you're, you're heavily involved in the hostage community. Oh yeah. Helping. For example, uh, less than one week ago, there was released some guy from Russia. One of the ladies that is the sister of one that guy, I did a panel with her some month ago and I called her, you know, mm -hmm. and they're connected. And some of the hostage that had returned, uh, uh, we are connected, and sometimes they call me. I give them uh, advices. By the way, that's the way I decided to create my coaching program because I began to, to do it uh, on a pro bono basis, working with them. And I say, I love doing this. I, I decided to to do it as a business. Mm, nice. Um, how is your health now? It's better than what, than before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me, let me, something that this is that weird thing that happened with this situation when when my family began to provide me the food during those years that i was there uh, as i said my son provided the grocery and somebody cook the person that was cooking to me is a is a very close friend today and and she was so healthy with that that with what she was cooking that literally all the problems they have in the past are gone Nice. So, so, so all my metabolism now is okay. Is you good? You're good. Oh yeah, yeah, good. We have a guest to guest question, Jose, as you know, and the guest on the podcast before yours left behind a question for you to answer. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go back to a major moment in your life. What is that moment, and what is one piece of advice you would give to yourself? Well, my, my major moment was when I was captured in this situation. It was November 21, 2017. And for me, it was like a before and after in my life. Mm. Something I never expected to come. But, you know, there is a, something that, that, that happened. That one month before... I had opportunity to be in a summit that, that I attended in my company, who the, the keynote speaker was a guy called Captain Phillips. Did you see the movie? Cap the real, yeah. Okay, the real Captain Phillips was there one month before. And when he finished his speech, I, I, I told him, man, well, what a journey. But he told me that everybody has inside that inner force because it, it comes from God. When you go to any adverse situation in life, you have that force. Mm -hmm. That's where I, the first time I heard about that. That day that I was going through that situation, I was remembering what the, the guy told me. And, and that's what I did. Yeah. That's what I did. I unleashed that inner force that we have inside. And that's why today I, 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 I bring to the table to the people. Everybody has that inner force. That, that's why you see people doing things amazing. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, how this guy did that? Because he, he could unleash that inner force. Mm -hmm. Always connected with God. Amazing. And that you were able to channel that on a chance meeting, you know, at a summit. Yes. So the website, Jose, is joseconnect.com. We will put the links in the show notes. Your book is From Hero to Villain. There's an opportunity for them to get it through your website or it is available on Amazon, correct? Correct, yes. Both. It is a fascinating, fascinating read, fascinating journey. And just knowing that we are sort of taking a glimpse into where you were in your mindset and your communications with your wife as as you go through the pages of the book. It's amazing. Yes. And you and you will really feel it. 
there is a chapter of my book, the, the chapter 11, yep. that is the, the main uh, uh, core of the situation. My wife always said that, that every time she, because she was kind of my editor working me to put it together. And she, and she always says that every time she reads a book, she cannot stop crying. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of emotion there. A mm -hmm. lot. A lot of emotion. If you had 60 seconds to tell the world a story, what would they learn from you? Well, that first of all, of all that uh, I went through this journey, but I decided to convert my journey, my ordeal in something that really has purpose, has meaning, that I can help others with this. So that's why I created my coaching program. That's why I decided to speak, to inspire people on, on, on my journey. And that's why I, I decided to write the book. For me, the speaking, the coaching, and, 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 uh, and the book are perfectly aligned with my mission. Sure. So that's my mission in life. And this is really what I love to do, and I enjoy it. And I'm here to help anybody that's hearing me. And in my webpage, you will find everything. You will find everything because today, even I, I write a newsletter. And by the way, I have a podcast every Monday morning in a, a Christian channel where I talk about leadership and resilience. I talk about this every week. And they so can I, access that through your website? Yes, of course. You can go to my website. You can go to my newsletter or you can go to LinkedIn. But in my website, you can go everything. You can go to my website. website. My website, like, like my, the course from there, you can go everywhere. Sure. And, and people can sign up for your newsletter and hear from you? Of course. I already have like 3,000 uh, subscribers. Yes, I'm, I'm getting. And yesterday I got to the 8,000 subscribers on LinkedIn, so I'm very happy. <laughs> I hit that. Yes. It's fabulous. Well, I hope someday you come to Boston. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love Boston. I, you, I, I love We can Boston. hang out. We can yeah. hang out. Absolutely. Well, Jose, I appreciate your time. It is extremely valuable. And I hope I honored that here today. No, I'm honored to be with you. This is a wonderful show. And as I said, you're a very schematic person. <laughs> I. <love. laughs> you're showing everyone my AR with OCD, Jose. Go on. <laughs> Go on. All right, my friend. I appreciate it. Okay, to, bye. To our listeners, if you have a story to share, visit tellusastorypodcast.com. If you're an aspiring author, a seasoned business owner, or looking to elevate your personal brand, visit BelmontCityPress.com for expert advice on writing your own success story. Trust the next chapter because you are the author. Now, tell us a story. <laughs>